So today, we're going to talk about the ocean worlds. Now, you're familiar with the one we have here on Earth. It's a very large ocean, but there are many places in the solar system where there's even more water. So we're going to take a look at a couple of them. Okay. はいえー、皆さん、地球にはもちろん海があるというのをご存知だと思いますけど、実は太陽系の中には地球よりも水の量が多い海というのがありますですので、そういった世界について見ていきましょう。So、at, Europe, surface。Is because uh, it has uh, resurfaced itself over many millions of years. It is a Galilean moon, and here are the Galilean moons Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. And each of these moons have water underneath their icy crust, except for Io. Io is really hot. And if we put on our infrared glasses, it would look like this. See the volcanoes? So the water has been dissipated on the island. はい、えー、まずは木星の周りにあるガリレオエースの一つであるエーロパから見ていきましょう。ガリレオス、皆さん知ってます。ガリレオエース知ってますか？聞いたことある？はい。木星の周りには実は4つのガリレオ衛星が回っていてそのうちの3つは実は氷衛星と呼ばれるものですで氷衛星表面は氷ですけど中には実は木があるんですねで1つだけ一番内側にあるイオだけはものすごく熱くなっていてここにあるように、まあ、赤外線で見るとこれ火山の噴火が見えるわけですけどもこれよりものすごく熱くなっていて水はなくなっていますが他の氷衛星にはもちろん氷がいっぱいあって中には海があるそういう世界です Now, each of these moons were created at the same time, about 4.5 billion years ago. And tidal forces from Jupiter have changed their surfaces. So tidal forces are when, in an orbit around Jupiter, when the moon is close to Jupiter, Jupiter squeezes it. And as the moon goes You know, another part of the orbit, furthest away from Jupiter, it relaxes it. And so if we were to just look at the moon, Europa would go like this every orbit, which is about two and a half days. And so the surface moves 30 meters up and back every two and a half days. はい、え木星の周りを回っているということはどういうことかと言いますと木星は非常に大きな惑星ですが非常に強い重力があるわけですねでその木星の周りを完全な円で回ってないと時々木星に近づいたり木星から遠ざかったりしますそのためにエーロパというのはものすごい勢いで歪められます実際には30メーターの範囲にわたって伸び,伸びたり縮んだりするわけですで伸びたり縮んだりするせいで先ほどの画像を見て気づいたと思いますけどエーロパの表面にはクレーターがありませんクレーターがないということは、クレーターというのはあの天体がぶつかってできるわけですけど、クレーターがないということは表面はいつもきれいになっているわけです。なぜきれいになっているかというと、そういった調積作用といいますけども、それによって表面がいつもいつも新しくなっているわけです。Fissures that you see on the surface. Also, we see some fabulous other volcanic like features. And what we believe is happening is that the water is being heated from below. And so, Europa. Has geysers of water that come out of the cracks and fall back on its surface. 
Here is a set of observations from Galileo that we recently analyzed. And here are geysers that were observed by the Hubble Space Telescope. ヨーロッパの下には海があると言いましたどうしてそうなっているかというとさっき言ったように氷の塊なんだけども伸び縮みしているうちに熱が発生して中ではあの温度が高くなって水が溶けてるわけですねでその水が例えば割れ目から染み出てきたりあるいは火山のような形で吹き出たりしてそれが表面に積もるせいでヨーロッパの表面にいつもいつも新しくなっているわけですですけどもこれは何を言ってるかというとヨーロッパの中に海があってその海が宇宙空間に出てきているということですからそれを探る可能性があるという So we want to know how much water in, in, in liquid form is underneath the icy crust of Europa. And we believe there's twice as much water underneath the icy crust of Europa than there is on this Earth. And if we pull all the water and, sh and, and put it in a ball from Earth and from Europa, you can see There's twice as much water. So it is really an ocean world. はい、で、じゃあ、ヨーロッパの中に氷が,氷が溶けて水になってるんだけど、どれだけの海水量があるのかっていうのはもちろん大きな興味があるんです。で、今の現在の見積もりでは、ヨーロッパっていうのは、えー、っと大きさが2000メーターぐらい直径しかないちっちゃい天体なんだけども、それを保っている水の量は、地球の2倍あるんじゃないかと推定されています。So what's heating the water? Underneath this icy crust that creates this ocean, we believe it is hydrothermal vents on the seafloor. And in fact, if we want to imagine what the inside of Europa looks like, it might look like Io with many volcanoes where these hydrothermal vents are. ヨーロッパは歪められることで温められてますって言いましたで温められた結果何が起きてるかっていうと表面は氷でその下には海が水が溶けて海になってるんだけどもその海底には実は海底火山があると思われてますですからヨーロッパのヨーロッパの中にはですねイオ先ほど一番最初言ったイオみたいにドロドロ溶けていてその上を氷を覆ってるんだけども間にある氷が溶けて天体の表面の下に水があるそういった状態になってるんじゃないかとみんな考えてます So we believe that Io may have had an icy crust at one time, but it was so hot because it was close to Jupiter and the tidal forces were so great that it's dissipated all its ice and therefore all the water. But Europa, which is further away, isn't receiving as much energy through tidal forces as Io and maintains a balance. Of hydrothermal vents on the bottom of its ocean and liquid water above it. So, this is the Io, which is the one that 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 is So NASA is building a spacecraft, this one right here, it's called the Europa Clipper, and it will orbit Jupiter and fly by Europa many times and look for plumes. And here are the orbits of these flybys. NASA はこのような面白い天体であるエーロパを探査する計画エーロパクリッパーというものを計画していますそれはこのようにエーロ,エーロパの周りを何回も何回もフライバイして全球の地図を描くそういった探査計画です So the next moon we want to look at is Enceladus and this is not a moon of Jupiter it's a moon of Saturn And it's much smaller, but it too is an ocean world. In the southern hemisphere, Enceladus has these huge cracks, and they are called tiger stripes because they look like tiger stripes. 
what's coming out of these cracks are huge water spouts or geysers. And in some cases, we believe this is a wall of water that's coming from inside its ocean out into the Saturn system. And another view of this is shown here. You may have to go to the next one. And as you can see, these huge geysers are, are leaving the moon and going out into the Saturn system. はい、え、ヨーロッパは木星の衛星でしたが、土星の衛星エンセラダスという木星で、あの、ご紹介したいと思います。これは非常にちっちゃい衛星で、この発見があるまでは大して注目もされていなかったんですけども、まあそういった
うすると南半球に新しい水になってくるそういった地球であるような水サイクル地球では水そういう水サイクルというわけですけどそれと同じようなメタンサイクルが大気中にあるということが分かります。Now, another reason why Titan is so fascinating is because of this liquid methane. We, here on Earth, need water to survive. So we need a liquid, which then is a solvent. We extract energy, and then the liquid is used to eliminate waste. So a liquid. Here on Earth, this water is very important for life as we know it. But if another type of life can use a different liquid, such as liquid methane, it would be a type of life very different than our own. So, Titan is extremely important to go to and look for life that's not like us. で地球とよく似たあの気象現象が起きていると言いましたけれども地球において水というのは生命のために必要だということがよくあるわけですねでそれは水 H2O である必要があるでしょうか何か液体があれば生命を支えることができるんじゃないかそういって考えてみると実はタイタンにはメタンの液体を使った生命がいるかもしれないそれは我々とは全く違う生命なわけですがもしかしたらそういった意味での生命という世界があるかもしれないですその意味でタイタンは非常に注目されているとます Now, this is another beautiful object. It's a dwarf planet called Pluto that NASA has a mission that flew by recently. That mission was New Horizons. And we finally figured out that underneath the surface of this beautiful body must contain some sort of liquid. And how we figured it out was by looking at its shape and its composition relative to its moon, Sharon. はい、ここに見せている絵は、ニューホライズンズという NASA の探査機が、冥王星をフライバイするときに撮ったものです。そこの成分を、えー、衛星、チャロンと比べる中、カロンと比べる中で、冥王星の地下にも海があるはずだということを結論しました。What we found out is Charon, the moon of Pluto, and Pluto have a certain orientation that stays the same. So if you were on Pluto and you wanted to see Charon, you could only see it if you were standing on the backside of Pluto. It would always be overhead. And so you could draw a line between Charon and Pluto, literally right through each moon, and that line would stay the same. Pluto and Charon orbit one location, and that location is outside the surface of Pluto. I don't know. 冥王星の衛星カロンという非常に大きなものなのであの割と強い相互作用を持ちますその結果カロンの位置関係カロンと冥王星の位置関係というのはここにある関係が固定したままお互いの周りをぐるぐる回るそういった状態になっているわけです So we've been studying what the heart of Pluto is and we now believe it is a huge impact crater So a long time ago, an impact occurred, which blew away most of the crust of Pluto. And over time, its cold atmosphere of nitrogen settled into that crater. That also means that when you look at the density of the crust, it is the least dense portion. And tidal forces, gravitational forces, from Charon slid this crust such that it now is in a completely orientation. From impact, 
and then the sliding started until it obtained the equilibrium we see now. And the only way that can occur is if it had a liquid or slushy layer for this crust to spin on. Hi, the
抜き出したものがどんどんどんどん降り積もるせいで表面はどんどんいつもいつも新しくなっていくのでクレーターが残ってないという話を一番最初にしたのまさにそうだね少し降り積もってる Next question. So you told us about lecomethane and on the Titan's surface. Yes. And I was just asking, I just wanted to ask, if, you, if we can't do the experiment on Earth with lecomethane, so can we create lecomethane on Earth? Yes. Good question. Can we create liquid methane on Earth? And the answer is yes. Uh, we can get methane cold enough for it to create and maintain a liquid. So we can. Can't we experiment? With Yes. Could we could, to find life? Well, uh, I'm not going to drink liquid methane, uh, and I don't think we'll get anyone to do that. But life has to evolve on Titan to be able to use methane in that manner, if it ever existed there. So we unfortunately have to go to Titan to look for life. Okay. はいえっと、液体があるや生命がいるので液体のメタンがあるタイタンに生命がいるかもしれないという話をずっとの質問でしたで、えっと、地,球地球上で液体のメタンを作ってです、ね、そこで生き残るやつをどんどん,どんどん実験したらいいなという面白い提案があったんですけども、まあ、地球上の生命というのはメタンを利用してできるようにできていないのでそういった実験は多分絶対失敗して、えー、メタンにいるやつはそういった環境に適応して進化してくるのでメタンあのタ,イタ,イタ,ンにはタイタンにいるやつはメタンを利用して進化するので。もしそういった生命がいるんだとすれば、そういう数十億年をかけた進化の結果ですので、やっぱりタイタンに行って探すしかないですよね。そういう会話でした。Next question. Yes. <笑>もしもえっともしも地球以外の惑星に、惑星じゃなく天体に生命がいるとしたら、どのような例えばそれが細菌なのか、それとも多細胞生物なのか。So what is your expectation? What, suppose we find life. What, what, what is your okay. expectation? So we are looking for life in the solar system in many places, like Europa, but also Mars. We're looking for life that may exist there today, probably in the aquifers, and. Also, by looking at its surface, it may have had life in its past. But this is what we know. If we can find life in these other planets and these other moons here in the solar system, it must be everywhere in the galaxy, on other planets and in other solar systems. So that's the exciting finding. And in our solar system, we kind of expect it to be in small forms, like uh, my, what we call microbial life. Yeah. 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 Yeah
lost it by some of this in the game against the uh, Yeah, it's a very good question. We believe in the outer part of our solar system, there was a significant amount of oxygen and hydrogen linked together as H2O. And that would be water, but it's probably in all three forms of solid, liquid, and vapor. Now that actually comes to scientists as a big surprise. And, and one way to think about it is if you had an ice cube at Pluto and you moved it towards the sun, there would be a place where the sun's energy would begin to change the phase of that ice. And that location is in the asteroid belt. And every location further than that, water should be in solid form, but it's not. We find it in these moons in liquid and in vapor form. And it's because of the energy, tidal energy, this gravitational squeezing of these bodies that create the heat necessary to melt the ice. Where they will land 
where they will grow, and the ones with the X's are the ones that have failed. Hi, there are Cassetters and Hard Jewish Mans. Surely, I have a Jewish coach that I know, Robert Kyoto, she never Cassetters and Hard Jewish Mans. Surely, I have a Jewish coach that I know, Robert Kyoto, she never Cassetters and Hard Jewish Mans. Surely, I have a Jewish coach that I know, Robert Kyoto, she never Cassetters and Hard Jewish Mans. Surely, I have a Jewish coach that I know, Robert Kyoto, she never Cassetters and Hard Jewish Mans. Surely, I have a Jewish coach that I know, Robert Kyoto, she never あのターサするっていうのはですね、あの火星の横をちょっととあのフライバイしたり、あるいは火星の周りを回ったり、火星に着陸したり、あずには火星の上に着陸してローバーを持って動き回ったり、いろんな段階があるわけですけれども、そのそれぞれいろんな国が今までトライしてきてどんだけ失敗してきたかというようなことを書いたのがこのチャートになります。So even NASA has many failures. As you can see here, whether they are trying to make it uh, to the surface or uh, into orbit. Uh, and it's only been recently, in the last several years, that we have been very successful. So let me talk about a couple of these missions. Here currently is the missions that are operating at Mars. And here are the orbiters, Mars Express, European Space Agency's, um, uh, Mar uh, sorry, yeah, Mars Express is an ESA mission, NASA is uh, Odyssey, NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbit, MAVEN, and then the Indian Space Research Organization's MOM mission, and an ESA mission uh, called Trace Gas Orbiter. On the surface, the two rovers that are currently working are opportunity and curiosity. Now what will come up in the next several years is many new missions. Uh, we just launched InSight and this will land on the surface and we'll talk a little bit about what it will do. And we're developing a new rover which looks like curiosity. It's called Mars 2020. And the Japanese Space Agency is building a mission uh, called MMX, which will go to the two moons of Mars, both Phobos and Deimos. NASA also has a success in the past, but the most successful is now working on it. The result is that the rover on the moon has a lot of rover, and a lot of rover. A little earlier, InSight, 火星に着陸して火星の中がどうなっているかということを調べるというのを打ち上げましたでこれからマーツ2020のローバーってありますけど2020年にはああいったローバーを打ち上げます JAXA でも2024年を打ち上げを予定して火星の衛星フォコス・デーモスを調べる計画が準備されています What we have learned from our array of satellites both orbiters and landers and rovers is that Mars was very different in its past. We believe that Mars was an ocean world just like the Earth four billion years ago. So early on, Mars had plenty of water and it went through rapid climate change and then for the last three to three and a half billion years, it's a very arid and dry planet as we know it today. So this is a movie of what Mars may have looked like in its past, where we have calculated the amount of water Mars has lost, and we have put it back on the planet, and we see its large oceans, particularly in the northern hemisphere. In fact, about 30% of the northern hemisphere must have had water. And in some places, it would be uh, more than a mile deep. And so here, we can see 
where the ancient shoreline of Mars is. And now, let's see where we have put our spacecraft that land on the surface. Here is a Mercator projection of Mars. It, it is its surface, and it's colored in terms of its altitude, where red and white are high levels, and blue and green are low, lowland levels. And so, the, the area between the yellow and the green is the ancient shoreline of Mars. So here are the positions of those landers and orbiters that have made it to the surface but worked and operated for a period of time. And as you can see, many of them are in the ancient shoreline. And this is very important because this might be the region where life started in the ocean and moved to the land. So we, we want to look along the shoreline for a variety of things, such as clays and organic material and complex uh, carbon molecules that may actually be uh, biomolecules, like amino acids and other things. Here is where Curiosity is, and it's in a very large crater. This crater sits right at the ancient shoreline of Mars. And we now believe the water breached the crater wall and filled the crater up. So let's see what Curiosity has found over this last year. Here's the crater. It's called Gale Crater. And here is the location, right here, where Curiosity landed. Now this is a real picture, right after Curiosity landed. And, and it was easy for this rover to taste the soil and realize it's in an ancient lake or river bed. In fact, there's plenty of indications that large amounts of water flowed in this region for long periods of time. We can even determine the salinity of the water. And if you were there three and a half or four billion years ago, you could drink this water. And so here's other indications of the layered rock where, where sediments uh, are building up in each of these layers inside the crater. One of the really great results is as we dug into the surface, we saw that just below the surface, the soils are not red, they are gray. So Mars has soils like ours, we find 
carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur in these soils, along with nitrates, and the soils are moist. Now here is where Curiosity landed in 2012, and here is the path that it took. Each of these triangles are where we drilled into the rock and brought that material in and analyzed it in, in the laboratory on Curiosity. Here is the sand dunes that we navigated through, and now we're climbing up this huge hill the central peak of Gale Crater and looking at the stratigraphy. And what we see is a region of hematite and clay. And these are regions that are formed in, with the interaction of water, which is why we know that this crater was underwater for long periods of time. ここに見せてるのは着陸点からローバーがどうやって動いてるんで、しかも